A majority of archaeologists are women due to their natural ability to dig up the past. Late one winter night at a chateau event, security guards check cars for invitations while others patrol with dogs and guns. Underwater, spy Harry Tasker cuts through a canal gate with a torch, emerges through ice, and discards his scuba gear for a tuxedo. Hidden near the boathouse, he radios his team, arms himself, and prepares an explosive, finishing with a touch of Kalan. Following Gibbs' advice, Harry enters the mansion through a service door and encounters a cook in the kitchen, responding confidently in French to avoid suspicion. He takes a wine glass and heads into a ballroom filled with guests. As the orchestra plays the Blue Danube, Harry converses in Arabic with a sheik and acknowledges seeing another guest, Jamal Khaled. He also notices a woman, June of Skinner, eyeing him. After a brief interaction with a colonel and disposing of his drink, Harry ascends to the library on the second floor, then climbs to the third floor where he secretly transmits files to his team. On his way down, he asks a guard for bathroom directions in Arabic, before pausing to admire and discuss a Persian sculpture with Juno, who introduces herself as an art dealer. Harry uses a pseudonym and exchanges pleasantries, revealing his appreciation for Persian art, while Gib confirms Juno's background. When a security guard discovers a break in the ice and raises an alarm, chaos ensues. Gid warns Harry, who is at a formal event inside. As the security tightens, Harry uses the opportunity to dance the tango with Juno Skinner to pour Yuna Cabeza to blend in and keep an eye on the escalating security presence. Despite Gib's warning to leave, Harry continues dancing, impressing Juno. After decrypting important files, Faisal begins copying them. Post-dance, Harry excuses himself, claiming he has a flight to catch, and Juno gives him her business card, indicating interest in him. Outside, Harry opts to exit through the front gate, but is stopped by a guard asking for an invitation. Harry distracts him with a fake invitation, sets off an explosive remotely, and then flees, overcoming guards and dogs with physical confrontations. He is pursued by men on snowmobiles and skis, whom he dispatches before reaching the van. After taking out two more attackers, Harry safely escapes in the van with his team. After completing their mission, the team returns to Washington, D.C. Gibb drives Harry home and helps him switch back to his real identity by handing him his actual wallet and items to support his cover story of a trip to Geneva and a snow globe souvenir for his daughter, Dana. Before leaving, Jib also returns Harry's wedding ring. At home, Harry picks up a newspaper and enters quietly, joining his wife Helen in bed who sleepily asks about his flight. The next morning, Harry gives Dana the snow globe, reminds her she's late for school and to feed their dog, Gizmo. Dana dismisses the snow globe as lame and discards it. Meanwhile, Harry maintains the facade of his trip being for a sales convention with Helen, who jokes about their plumbing bill being reduced by a fictitious affair with the plumber, to which Harry responds humorously before they part for the day. Gibb sneaks a video camera disguised as a cigarette pack into Harry's home and places it on the mantel. He then hands Harry sunglasses that serve as the camera's monitor. Through these, Harry sees his daughter Dana steal money from his jacket, but she leaves with her boyfriend before he can confront her. While driving to work, Gib, who has been married three times, makes pessimistic comments about Dana's behavior, suggesting she might be involved in serious issues like sex, drugs, or needing money for an abortion. Harry disagrees, maintaining his daughter wouldn't engage in such activities. At work, they pass through rigorous security, including an X-ray tunnel and multiple biometric scanners, before reaching their office at the Omega Sector, described as the last line of defense. Spencer Trilby the head of Omega Sector, criticizes Harry for the mishandled mission in Switzerland. Despite Harry's defense and support from Gibb and Faisal, Spencer remains skeptical. Faisal reveals that $100 million was transferred by Jamal Khaled from a bank linked to terrorism, and that four nuclear warheads were smuggled out of Kazakhstan, suggesting Khaled's group might attempt to bring them into the U.S. Spencer demands concrete evidence before a potential nuclear attack near the White House. Meanwhile, Helen discusses Harry's seemingly dull life as a sales rep with her co-worker Allison, mentioning how his job descriptions help her fall asleep. Back at Omega Sector, 
Gib and Fazzle inform Harry of a suspicious $2 million payment from Collent to June of Skinner, hinting at possible illicit activities beyond mere antiquities dealings. Harry orders a thorough investigation into Juno and plans to visit her office in Washington, D.C. to gather more information. At Juno's office, Harry reintroduces himself as Harry Rehnquist, pretending to be a corporate art consultant from San Francisco. Juno is surprised, but quickly engages with him. As they walk through a bay of newly arrived Middle Eastern antiques, Harry mentions Juno's skill in reading ancient Sanskrit and hints that she's not well-liked by her peers because she uses diplomatic contacts to export items from reluctant countries. Meanwhile, Juno's boss, Salim Abu Aziz, watches them. Juno explains that sourcing items from ancient Persia involves navigating complex international relations due to the difficulty of extracting artifacts from places like Iran, Iraq, and Syria. Back at the hotel, where his team has established a makeshift office, Gibbs suggests Juno might be involved in illegal activities beyond art dealing. Faisal reports that their alias was scrutinized immediately after leaving Juno's office, indicating heightened suspicion. Harry instructs the team to enhance surveillance on Juno and add more personnel to monitor her activities. In Juno's office, Aziz physically and verbally assault her, calling her offensive names because she is smuggling nuclear warheads into the U.S. for him. He warns her that their operations are under surveillance and scolds her for her interaction with Harry, demanding she find out more about him. Meanwhile, Harry's wife Helen calls his office at Tectel Systems, which serves as a front for the Omega Sector. The call is transferred to Harry's hotel suite, where Helen informs him about a birthday party she and their daughter Dana are planning for him, expecting him by 8 p.m. Harry assures her he will make it. As Gibb drives Harry home, they realize they are being followed. Harry coordinates with Fazzle to meet at Georgetown Park Mall for backup. Exiting the SUV, Harry uses his disguised cigarette camera to keep an eye on Aziz's henchmen, who are following him on foot, while Aziz waits in the car. Jib, meanwhile, informs Helen that Harry will be late due to a forgotten item at the office. At home, a skeptical Dana comments on Harry's predictably delayed return, sitting in front of his untouched birthday cake. Harry enters a mall and sets up a camera in the men's restroom, then pretends to use a urinal. Outside, a bus obscures the view between Gib and a trailing car, allowing Aziz to escape unnoticed. Jim alerts Harry that Aziz has left. Inside the restroom, two henchmen attempt to ambush Harry. The first henchman enters and casually calms his hair, while the second enters, draws a suppressed pistol, and shoots at Harry. Harry dodges the shot, disarms the first henchman, and a fight ensues. He manages to shoot the first henchman, causing him to fire his weapon wildly. The second henchman tries to recover his pistol, but Harry kicks it away and ultimately incapacitates him with a hand dryer and handcuffs him. Aziz then storms into the restroom, firing at Harry with a submachine gun. Harry uses the handcuffed henchman as a human shield and then ducks for cover. Aziz searches the stalls, but Harry evades and retrieves his weapon. As Aziz exits the restroom, he fires at Harry who gives chase into the mall, with Aziz reloading on the run. Aziz escapes through a glass window of a mall shop, shooting at Gibb, who narrowly avoids being hit despite minimal cover from a lamppost. Harry follows Aziz by jumping through the same window and chases him down the street. Aziz hijacks a motorcycle, and Harry commandeers a police horse to continue the pursuit. Jib and Fazel, in an SUV and van, join the chase and try to block Aziz, but he maneuvers into a Marriott hotel. The chase continues into the parking garage and onto an elevator, where Aziz takes a woman hostage. Harry follows in another elevator and both head to the top floor balcony. Aziz jumps from the balcony into a swimming pool on an adjacent building's roof, while Harry's horse balks at the jump, causing Harry to nearly fall and lose his gun. When Jim drops Harry off at home, he finds Helen asleep at the table surrounded by uneaten birthday cake and balloons. Waking up, Helen is visibly upset, but she accepts Harry's apology for his late return. 
Harry uses his workplace's database to identify Oz's as a notorious terrorist known as the Sand Spider, leader of the Crimson Jihad group, and wanted for several bombings. The team updates Spencer on Oz's dangerous profile, and Harry commits to capturing him. Meanwhile, Harry visits Helen's workplace to invite her to lunch and mend their relationship. Before he can approach her, Helen receives a call from Simon and agrees to meet him immediately, implying a romantic encounter. Overhearing this, Harry is stunned and wanders into traffic. Gib rescues him and, understanding the situation, compares it to his own past marital issues, suggesting Helen still loves Harry despite her actions. He encourages Harry to focus on his work and channel his frustrations into their mission against terrorism. At dinner, Harry confronts Helen about her absence during a planned lunch visit, but she deflects with an excuse about courthouse documents. Harry hides his anger and pretends to believe her. At work, Jib informs Harry that Spencer authorized wiretaps on all of Juno's contacts. Faisal identifies potential Crimson Jihad associates in the U.S. Feeling desperate, Harry orders Gibb to also wiretap his own home and Helen's work phone, even forcefully insisting when Jib hesitates. Later, Harry reads a transcript of Helen arranging another meeting with Simon, which increases his frustration. The next day, Harry suggests lunch with Helen, but she claims she's going shopping with a friend. Suspicious, Harry covertly hands her purse to Jib outside, who implants it with surveillance devices. Harry then retrieves the modified purse from Gib, ensuring he can monitor Helen's movements and conversations. Harry and Jib follow Helen to a meeting with Simon in Chinatown, where they eavesdrop on their conversation in a Chinese restaurant. Simon portrays himself as a secret agent involved in covert operations, gaining Helen's trust. However, Harry and Jib realize Simon is a fraud when he tries to claim credit for Harry's recent encounter with Oz's by showing her a newspaper article about it. After the meeting, Simon returns to his job as a used car salesman. Harry, still undercover, visits Simon at the dealership and expresses interest in a Corvette. During a test drive, Simon reveals his strategy of targeting bored housewives by crafting tales of adventure and danger. Harry, playing along, inquires about the effect of his deception on their husbands, to which Simon callously responds that he would be out of business if husbands were attentive. Simon unwittingly describes Helen to Harry, using derogatory terms to praise her physique while mocking her marital dissatisfaction. Although angered, Harry restrains himself from confronting Simon physically. As they return to the dealership, Harry aggressively parks the Corvette to intimidate Simon, who then asks if Harry plans to purchase the car. Harry requests Simon to hold the car for a day, leaving the lot with a mix of frustration and strategic control over the situation. At night, while reviewing wiretap transcripts of Helen's conversations, Harry abruptly stops the SUV and demands the missing page from Gibb, who hesitantly hands it over after Harry punches the SUV window in frustration. The transcript reveals Helen agreeing to meet Simon under Key Bridge at 8 o'clock. Simultaneously, Simon is shown practicing shooting with an air pistol. Realizing the urgency as it nears 8 and the GPS indicates Helen's purse is still at home, Harry and Jib rush to the bridge. Harry diverts other agents from their assignments to intercept Helen and Simon, despite Gibbs' protest about misusing Omega Sector resources. Harry counters by threatening to expose Gibbs' previous operational mishap involving a personal indiscretion, forcing Gibbs to comply. As Simon picks up Helen in the Corvette, he instructs her to keep her head down while they drive out of the city. An Omega Sector agent mistakenly reports seeing Helen with her head in Simon's lap as they cross the bridge, monitored by a helicopter above. Jib, trying to give a benign explanation, suggests that Helen might simply be sleepy. Simon takes Helen to a rundown trailer park, claiming his trailer is a safe house because his usual places are compromised. Inside, he concocts a story about needing her to pose as his wife for a fictitious operation in Paris to avoid suspicion as a solo traveler. As he builds trust by expressing his reliance on her, Due to a supposed double agent, Simon attempts to initiate intimacy under the guise of maintaining their cover, making Helen uncomfortable. When she resists, the situation escalates. 
Outside, Omega Sector agents prepare for action. As Simon presses his advances, agents suddenly cut into the trailer, flooding it with light from a helicopter. In the chaos, Simon falls on Helen. Harry, disguised and furious at the sight, drags Simon out and handcuffs him. Helen is also restrained, and both are hooded and taken away. In an interrogation room, Harry, still masked and voice disguised alongside Gibb, questions Helen about her involvement with Carlos the Jackal, a name they use to test her. Helen, confused and scared, denies any real knowledge of Simon, saying she only met him recently. Harry presses her to explain how their relationship started. In a flashback, Simon leaves a briefcase with Helen at a Chinese restaurant, claiming it's for national security, and quickly departs. Curious and anxious, Helen opens the briefcase at work, discovering a passport, maps, and the air pistol seen earlier, then hurriedly locks it again. Back in the interrogation room, Harry probes Helen about her continued involvement with Simon, to which she responds that he claimed to need her help. Gibbs' questioning turns personal about potential infidelity, but Helen denies cheating. Discussing her husband, she describes Harry as a dedicated computer company sales rep and a good man. She admits she was enticed by the thrill of Simon's proposed Paris mission, needing to feel alive and appreciated. As the interrogation intensifies, Harry questions whether Helen slept with Simon. Her emotional denial escalates to her violently striking the mirror with a stool. When Harry finally asks if she still loves her husband, Helen affirms her enduring love. Seeing her desire for adventure, Harry offers Helen a choice. Undertake a cover assignment for them as Doris, or face federal prison. She agrees to the former. Afterward, still distressed, Helen is dropped off at her car. Harry and Gibb, pretending Simon is a terrorist named Carlos, take him in his underwear to a dam to intimidate him. When they reveal their faces, Simon recognizes Harry and tries to sell him a car, maintaining he is just a used car salesman, not a terrorist or spy, and admits to being a coward. Under the threat of a gun, Simon becomes so scared that he urinates on himself, reinforcing his claim of not being a spy. They leave Simon at the dam, confused and scared. The next day, when Harry questions Helen about her whereabouts the previous night, she nervously lies about a flat tire. During their conversation, Gibb calls, disguising his voice, and instructs Helen, using her code name Doris, to pick up an envelope from the hotel marquee. Criticized by his colleague for misuse of funds, Harry continues the ruse to test Helen's willingness for espionage. At the hotel, Helen, dressed elegantly, retrieves the envelope containing a phone number and an electronic bug. Following distorted instructions from Gibb, she's told to pose as a prostitute named Michelle and meet a suspected arms dealer in a hotel suite. She's instructed to convince him she's replacing his usual contact due to illness and to plant the bug near the room's telephone to complete her task. Gibb ends the call and Helen, preparing to impersonate a prostitute, transforms her appearance by altering her dress to reveal more cleavage, applying additional makeup, and wetting her hair. She hides the electronic bug in her bra and adjusts her wedding ring to her other hand before entering the suite where Harry waits in the shadows. Using a pre-recorded tape by his colleague Jean-Claude, Harry instructs her to drink champagne and join him in the bedroom. Helen, introducing herself as Michelle, conveys that she's a substitute for Carla, whom she thinks he might like. Harry controls the conversation using the tape recordings. He then directs her to slowly undress and dance seductively for him, to which she complies, becoming increasingly uninhibited. As the music plays, Harry is caught off guard, momentarily dropping the tape player. Moving further into his ruse, Harry asks Helen to lie on the bed with her eyes closed, approaching her with a rose, which he uses in a seductive gesture, ultimately kissing her. Reacting violently to the intimacy, Helen hits Harry with the phone and, after verbally lashing out at him, hastily redresses. She plants the bug on the lampstand, calls him derogatory names, kicks him, and rushes to leave the room. As Harry tries to explain the situation to Helen, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by armed gunmen bursting in, shouting in both Arabic and English. Harry instructs Helen to stay calm and not react, but Helen, caught up in the moment, asserts that she's the target they want. 
Harry quickly silences her, trying to manage the situation by urging the gunmen to release her, but they take both of them away. The gunmen escort Harry and Helen to a private jet, where they are met by Juno, who steps out of a limousine. Helen tries to clarify their identities, insisting to Juno that she is Harry's wife, not a prostitute, and even shows a locket with their family pictures. Despite this, the flight attendant tranquilizes both Helen and Harry. Just before losing consciousness, Harry hears Juno comment on Helen's unawareness of his secret life as a spy. They wake up at Aziz's terrorist camp, where Juno shows them four large statues, referring to them as the Four Horsemen and describing them as priceless artifacts. Terrorists dismantle one of the statues to reveal a Soviet nuclear warhead. As the event is filmed, Aziz confronts Harry, pressing him to identify the weapon publicly to declare the Crimson Jihad as a nuclear threat. Holding Helen at knife point, Aziz insists on Harry's cooperation to broadcast their message. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Helen is shocked, having only known Harry as a computer salesman. Under duress, Harry describes the weapon and tries to negotiate Helen's release. Amidst the chaos, Helen learns Harry's true identity as a spy, leading her to physically lash out at him in anger and disbelief. Meanwhile, Aziz continues his preparations, ordering his men to extract more warheads. He then addresses the camera with a threatening speech against the U.S., demanding the withdrawal of military forces from the Persian Gulf. The filming is interrupted by a low battery, frustrating Aziz. Simultaneously, a chauffeur discovers a transmitter in Helen's purse, which she denies knowing about. As Omega Sector agents mobilize from Miami to intervene, they track the transmitter to an island in the Florida Keys. However, Oz's destroys the transmitter before a precise location can be confirmed, severing the signal and escalating the urgency of the situation. Harry and Helen are taken to a small building where Aziz's interrogator Samir administers a truth serum to Harry, promising to return once it takes effect. In the meantime, Harry confronts Juno about her involvement with the terrorists, to which she coldly replies that it's purely for the money, showing no allegiance to their cause or concern for Harry. When Harry dismisses any personal connection between them, calling Juno a psychopathic witch, she kisses him and exits, leaving Harry to reassure Helen that there was nothing romantic between him and Juno. Under the influence of the truth serum, Harry becomes visibly impaired, his senses distorted. Helen, worried, inquires about their fate and the nature of the drug. Harry, affected by the drug, grimly acknowledges their likely death and outlines various ways the terrorists might execute them. Helen probes deeper into Harry's secret life, learning he has been a spy for 17 years and has killed people, though he justifies it by saying they were all bad. During this exchange, Aziz discovers a photo of their daughter Dana in Helen's wallet, considering her as a potential leverage for his plans. Samir the interrogator returns to torture Harry, but first asks if Harry has any confessions. Harry coolly threatens Samir, then details exactly how he will kill him, which amuses Samir until Harry reveals he has already freed himself from his handcuffs. Harry then executes his described plan, using Samir as a shield, killing another guard with a thrown sharp instrument, and finally breaking Samir's neck. When another henchman investigates, Harry kills him with a butcher's hook and takes his gun. Harry frees Helen, and they briefly hide behind a truck, observing Aziz and his followers at a pep rally, chanting and firing their weapons. As they attempt to escape, other terrorists discover the bodies and open fire, but Harry counters, using an ACAN rifle and knives from fallen enemies in close combat, effectively taking out several men. When a terrorist grabs Helen, Harry shoots him and takes his Mac-10. Meanwhile, Aziz stops the rally to arm the first nuclear warhead, setting its timer for 90 minutes. As he proclaims their imminent victory, he covers the warhead with an American flag and seals it with concrete. Harry translates some of Aziz's speech for Helen but stops as the rhetoric continues. Helen questions the logistics of their location, leading Harry to deduce they're in the Florida Keys, suggesting that the terrorists plan to transport the warhead to the mainland via the overseas highway. Harry and Helen realize they are the only ones who can stop the terrorists as they begin loading nuclear warheads onto trucks. 
Harry arms Helen with a Mac-10 and takes out two terrorists quietly before escalating his attack with a grenade that sets off nearby gasoline barrels, engulfing several terrorists in flames. In the chaos, he shoots out the lights and continues firing at more men. When a terrorist disarms him and holds him, Harry instructs Helen to shoot. However, the recoil causes her to drop the Mac-10, which continues firing as it falls downstairs, inadvertently killing several terrorists, including the one holding Harry. As more terrorists arrive and open fire, Helen takes cover while Harry returns fire with another Mac-10. Despite their efforts, the last warhead is loaded onto a helicopter which takes off. Harry then arms himself with additional weapons from fallen terrorists and uses a fuel truck's nozzle as a makeshift flamethrower. Aziz retaliates with a rocket launcher, blowing up the truck and forcing Harry to dive into water to escape, while the terrorists mistakenly believe they have killed him. Meanwhile, Juno and Aziz take Helen hostage and depart in a limousine, with Aziz then boarding the helicopter seated atop the warhead. As the terrorist convoy proceeds along the highway, Harry, presumed dead, surfaces and is rescued by only a sector agent's arriving in helicopters. Harry quickly briefs them while airborne, ready to continue the pursuit and rescue Helen. Gibb coordinates an evacuation from the island while Harry contacts the White House, resulting in the dispatch of two Marine Corps Harrier jets to the scene. As Juno holds Helen at gunpoint in a limousine, the jets engage the terrorist convoy. One jet destroys the Lee truck with gunfire, and a failed missile attempt by terrorists in the third truck results in their own casualty and the missile missing the Harrier. The jets then use missiles to destroy the bridge, taking out the second truck and causing the third truck to crash. During the chaos, Helen struggles with Juno for control of the gun. In the scuffle, a stray bullet kills the chauffeur, causing the limousine to careen out of control. Helen eventually disarms Juno using a champagne bottle and is rescued by Harry, who is on a helicopter. As Helen is pulled to safety, Juno sees the destroyed bridge too late and the limousine falls into the water. After the confrontation, the jets and helicopters land near the bridge. Gid warns everyone about the nuclear detonation, urging them not to look at the flash. As the warhead explodes, Harry and Helen share a kiss. The tender moment is interrupted when Jib informs Harry that Oz's has taken their daughter down hostage in a Miami high-rise. Despite Gib's concern, Harry commandeers a Harrier jet, brushing off reminders of his lack of recent flight experience with a quip about his pay. He takes off roughly but determinedly heads to Miami to rescue Dana. Oz's watches himself on a news broadcast from a tape released to the media, with Dana sitting nearby. A video crew, secretly including Faisal from Omega Sector, comes upstairs to film Oz's. Oz's arms a nuclear warhead, but carelessly leaves the key in the arming box. Meanwhile, Harry pilots a jet towards Miami. During a staged filming session, Faisal uses the distraction to arm himself from a hidden camera compartment, shooting the terrorists present. Dana, seizing the opportunity, grabs the warhead key and escapes to the roof with Oz's and his men in pursuit. Dana climbs a crane, and despite Oz's shooting at her, she threatens to drop the key if approached. Harry arrives, coordinating with Fazel, and attacks the terrorist-held floor, clearing it of threats. As Oz's catches up to Dana on the crane, she slips but catches herself on the jet's nose as Harry maneuvers close. Aziz follows, confronting Harry and Dana on the jet. A fierce struggle ensues between Harry and Aziz. Despite damage to the jet from other terrorists shooting, Harry manages to eject Aziz by banking the jet sharply, causing Aziz to get caught on a missile. In a dramatic climax, Harry seeing Aziz hanging from the missile, delivers a line, you're fired, and launches the missile through the building, destroying the terrorist helicopter and eliminating the threat. Oz's is killed in the explosion, ensuring Dana's safety and thwarting the terrorist plot. Harry safely lands the jet on the street, and he and Dana are quickly escorted away by federal agents. A year later, Harry and his family are enjoying a peaceful dinner, playing a game together. The tranquility is briefly interrupted by a phone call asking for Boris and Doris, the code names for Harry and Helen, signaling their ongoing involvement in covert operations. 
Next, we see Harry and Helen together at a formal ballroom event, seamlessly blending into high society as they work as a spy team. While they mingle with the unaware guests, the scene shifts to reveal Simon, attempting to charm a woman by pretending to be a spy. Harry approaches, mockingly calling him Carlos, which scares Simon into dropping a champagne bottle. Helen theatrically places her lipstick case under Simon's chin, mimicking a gun, and Simon reacts by running away in fear. As the event continues, Harry and Helen share a dance to a tango, symbolizing their partnership both romantically and professionally, while Gib, still in the surveillance van, humorously urges them to stay focused on the mission. The scene closes with Jib expressing his frustration about always being in the van, playfully hinting at his desire for a change in his routine roles. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.